Hello folks, um, here I'm going to present a video to you to show my creative process. And uh, yes, my dog is barking as usual. Um, I'm doing this at double speed because otherwise it's an hour long video and I, I don't think a lot of people want to sit through an hour long video. So um, here we go. Uh, as you can see, I um, start by just without any preconceived notion of what I'm going to paint. I just start by um, using some burnt umber and scrubbing the paint around and uh, just sort of letting the shapes give me feedback as to what what I'm going to paint. You know, it sounds kind of silly, but sometimes it's just when you don't have an idea, it's, it's best just to get in there and uh, just do something. And, and sometimes you, you, you end up with crap and uh, sometimes you end up with a nice painting. So, but you, you have to learn to trust your instincts as an artist and uh, embrace your failures because um, every failure or every unsuccessful painting is a step towards uh, making better art. And uh, it is the process that, that leads us towards uh, or, or takes us along the path of, of improving our work. And you just got to get in there and, and just go to town and have fun with it. So uh, I'm just going to, I'm not going to comment every, every minute of this video. I'm just going to let it run along and I'll, I'll jump in as uh, I feel the need to explain what's going on. I realize a lot of this, um, you know, I try to stand off to the side when I paint, but sometimes I'll block the camera. So just forgive me for um, paying attention, paying more attention to the video than, than <laughs> not the video. Forgive me for paying more attention to the painting rather than being aware of what, what I'm recording. So um, clearly I have decided that this is a beach scene uh, somewhere along the way and uh, I'm painting in or blocking in some, uh, some sand fence and some grasses. Um, not, to, not to give you a, a heads up, but in the end, I do not like this painting. And so therefore I've... Uh, I've, I've thought about it overnight and gone back the next week and, and changed it completely. So you'll have to um, also watch part one, and, or um, this is part one. You'll have to also watch part two and uh, part three to see the entire process. I think it's one of the most interesting lessons that I've, that I've done here. And uh, I am using oil paint in case it's not obvious. At this point, let's see, I'm using uh, cerulean blue and uh, the brush is probably dirty with a very little bit of burnt umber picking up from the edges and a lot of white to give myself a nice green sky color, which I eh, probably have a little bit of yellow in this too. So you can see I paint rather wildly and, you know, just try to get the big areas filled in and, and then uh, slowly scrub back in around all the shapes. You also note that I might, uh, in placing uh, paint, I go a lot of zigzag back and forth, you'll see. But I also always go back and, and smooth out paint in different directions so that you don't end up with this, uh, you don't notice a zigzag pattern. See, there I go again, and I'll come back at some point and smooth that out so it doesn't, you don't just see all these lines. That's one of the great things about oil paint is it's wet, you can just keep working for a few hours and, and uh, it's just really a ter terrific process. And I'll make changes along the way. And as you can see, I'm, I'm painting in front of, I'm demonstrating in front of my senior class. So I'm um, talking to them and they're telling me what I should be doing and they're making jokes and asking silly questions. So, you know, I've, I've eliminated that audio and trust me, you're, you're, you're glad, you'll be glad that I did. And then I'm doing a, a voiceover just to explain the process you, you know I'm sure that someone would find all the the uh, banter interesting but that's not what this is about this video is about painting and then uh, as the saying goes as above so below this is water or the ocean off in the distance so I um, use the same sky color because it's reflected the any water, any body of water, reflects the sky and the trees and everything that is that is in you know right above it. It, it reflects so it reflects color. 
So that's why we use the same color. And this is a mixture of, we're painted in the sand now, this is a mixture of um, white and burnt sienna. And, you know, as you can see, I'm probably dragging some of the loose um, burnt umber into the, into the mix as I go around the edges. So that's what give us, gives us this color. Going through, filling in all the, all the empty spaces, and then you see, I you just saw that I, uh, I'm putting some of the sand color up on the, the sticks. I mean, anything that's on the beach is going to pick up this sand and color and dirt and, and these and these uh, sort of tones. I wonder where I went. Ah, there we are. All right, there we are. More, more gray, more driftwood color on, on the fences, on the fence slats. And just a quick, you know, no, no fussing about. Just get in there and get it done. What's the worst thing that can happen? Well, in fact, in this case, it, it did happen. I just really hated the painting in the end. And that's why I go back and change it. Like I said, go make sure you watch part two and part three. Uh, and here I'm putting in some, some seagrass, just kind of a sweeping, you know, sweeping arcs of, of color, a little bit of green in that mixed with all the other, you know, my dirty brush and whatever else. It's probably got burnt umber and, and uh, sky color and God knows what else in it at the moment. So just, you know, enhancing the grass shapes a little bit. Putting some on the ground. Again, it's like I'm just defining the uh, edges, clean up the edges of some of the uh, sand fence, reshaping, making them slightly more angular, sharper, darker. I know this. I'm using a little rubber stylus tool. It's a little I don't know, rubber scraping tool. It's got a point on one end and a little sh angled shape on the other. And what I'm doing is scratching in some lines to give the um, the fence slats some some grain or some extra texture. Using the same tool, I'm scraping off the upper edge of the, gra the grass, scraping the paint off the upper edge, gives that little bit of sharp light edge. And we do that all over here. See, that little white comes out. Again, the beauty of oil paint is that it's wet and you can manipulate it uh, nearly infinitely until, until it starts to set up. I think the medium I used in class is Liquin, which is a very nice product. I think Winsor Newton makes it. I'm only using it because someone gave it to me. 
and it's a great medium. Um, I'm scraping off the tops of the slats and also scraping through uh, some wire. You know how these fences always have that dark wire holding them together. Anyway, back to the medium. The medium that I normally use at home is uh, about 50% uh, um, what's it called? Gamsol light, Galkid light. It's called Galkid light. And uh, that's made by Gamblin. And so I take 50% Galkid light and 50% uh, Gamblin odorless thinner, I think it's called. Boy, I wish I'd remembered these names, but you know, I don't, I just don't remember. And you know, I put a little, tiny little bit of uh, Damar varnish in it to give it a little bit of shine. So that's my mixture, 50% Galkid Light, 50% odorless thinner, and a tiny little hit of uh, Damar varnish. That's my normal medium. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, anyway, back to the painting. Um, orange, specifically because uh, someone in the room told me that I, at least, if you're going to paint a, a, a cliche of a, of a beach scene, do not make it a sunset. So, of course, that means I've got to reach for the orange and, and you know, and make it a sunset type painting so um, orange all the way all the way up mix it into the into the sky color so it mixes with the uh, sky color it gets a nice dirty orange slash green sky which you know I find kind of appealing at this point we're just about halfway exactly through the video so we're we're making headway. See, I slap the color down and spread it out and smooth it nicely so it, you don't see the brushwork quite. You know, I don't want to have, I don't want to leave patterns in the brushwork. <clears throat> okay, and coming up after all of this, uh, I'm going to use a fan brush, a fan brush that you see everybody using to make um, uh, pine trees. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> But I'm, I'm not going to make pine trees. I'm going to use it to make clouds. And, uh, you know, that's about the only thing I use a fan brush for. I know a lot of people use them to um, to smooth out, but I don't do much smoothing. I, I like a rough, I like some brushwork to show. All right, so continuing to pile on the, the orange. Blending up, you know, trying to soften that edge. Brighten it up along the bottom or along the horizon line. So I'm starting to tap in little areas that are going to become the clouds. A little bit of orange light up there bouncing off the off the cloudy section. Next, I believe I come in and put some orange in the water here. Ah, there we go. Now, see how I twist the brush, and it's a light touch. It's got a little bit of purple, a little bit of orange, a little bit of burnt umber in it, and you know it's picking up the color underneath, and it's and it's mixing with that color. And I, I smooth it out a little bit, as if it's you know the, the clouds are windswept. I'm going to put a couple of really small ones off in the distance. You always got to remember your uh, your space that you know you've got, not everything is in the same size and. You know, if you're going to paint some clouds, you've got to remember to put some tiny ones off in the distance a little bit. And still, still working it, still smoothing. It's a really great tool to make clouds because then they don't look like cookie cutter. up around all the edges you know the sky is far away so you want to you know smooth out a few things and here we go putting the the uh, sky color in the water because the can the water picks up whatever is in the area above it it picks up the sky color
uh, some of my students are off off camera asking questions so you'll see me every now and then trying to explain what's going on Meanwhile, they're telling me I should have I should have painted a winter scene with a barn in it. So they, they razzed me pretty good, but I can take it. All right, a little bit of orange along the edges, you know, to show the sunlight. Just sort of uh, peeking around the edge here a little bit. A little bit of light at the edges of the wooden slats. And all the way across and on the tops. And on the grasses. Same thing over here. enhancing the, the grass shapes. Just clean up Clean it up. Uh, we have an itchy nose today, don't I? Um, just clean up, you know, trying to get rid of some of these white spaces. Okay, a little bit of dark, a little bit of shadow, a little bit of definition along the, the lower edge in the sand, underneath the slats and underneath the grasses, you know, just trying to enhance the, the texture. And I go all over with this, all over the bottom edge anyway. Going back and where I had previously scraped out some of the texture, I'm I'm blurring that a little bit so it's not quite so um, sharp. You know, trying to create some variety of texture. You know, some sharp, some dull. Same thing with the grasses. Just clean up the edges.
seems like now I'm using just pure white to try to create this little bit of the, the little bit of foam that the uh, waves leave when they come up on the sand and a little bit of wave action in the water itself too. A little bit of dark, a little bit of light. Subtle, light touch in between peeking through. Clearly, I, I finally remember to bring my, my palette over to the easel rather than going back and forth to the table every two minutes. And let's see, just darkening up, darkening up where the slats sit on the beach to make them plant it in the ground a little bit better. And we're getting near the end, just a couple of minutes. Thank you for hanging in there. I hope you're learning something from the video. And, and um, you know, it's, it's always an interesting process. Painting is always interesting. All right, so here we go. A little more dark, a little bit. Somebody's telling me where I should put a brush stroke. <laughs> oh, they keep me entertained. Like that's just about it. So thank you again for watching. See you in the next video.